Hello and welcome to your New Jersey. I'm Lisa Marie Falvo. On today's show, we're talking all about the North to Shore Festival, coming to Atlantic City, Asbury Park, and Newark, New Jersey in June. The month-long event will be full of music, comedy, film, technology, and fun. First Lady Tammy Murphy, CEO of NJ Pack in Newark, John Schreiber, and performer Jared Clemens are here to tell us more about this amazing First of Its Kind Festival. First Lady Tammy Murphy announced the North to Shore Festival with her husband, Governor Phil Murphy, at NJ Pack in Newark back in March. Here to tell us why this is such an exciting event for all New Jerseyans is First Lady Tammy Murphy. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Great to see you. I'm very excited about the upcoming, uh, upcoming conversation. Yes, same here. So North to Shore Festival, what is it and why is it so amazing for the state? So North to Shore is um, a way to really showcase New Jersey, to um, you know, bring some economic impact here, and generally just to show how great a place New Jersey is. Um, I think that Phil and I were talking about you know, all of the incredible talent that we have in New Jersey, and many people don't know about all of the talent we have here. And so our vision was to create a, a show that we could, you know, put the entire landscape from Newark right down to uh, Atlantic City on the map, show people how beautiful we are, show people how much, um, how, how diverse we are in terms of our, you know, our geographic landscape and also, you know, bring our talent to the fore, bring business to the, each of those local communities and, and just have fun. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. The key towns are Newark, Red Bank, and Atlantic City. Why those three? Listen, um, the, the show's name, North to Shore. Uh, so I think it's, it's pretty um, self-explanatory. But, you know, I think that these are three very, um, very cool cities and parts of New Jersey with their own character. And we wanted to make sure that we were really, as I said, showcasing the entire state. And so, you know, Atlantic City is, is clearly a destination in the summer, and we want to make sure that we are sharing all that we can across all three cities. Are the acts reflective of the community in which they're played in? Yeah, I mean, by way of example, um, part, you know, th this, this show will do everything from um, showcase the Montclair Film Festival and, not, and, and shows that will, will be presented, movies that will be presented in Montclair, by having viewings on the beach in Atlantic City. You know, it's going to, we're gonna be in theaters, we're gonna be um, on sound stages. We're, we're doing all sorts of things up and down the state. Uh, so yes, I think it does really show um, the different elements and, and it, it is a little bit niche, but there are so many, so many different acts. You know, there's, there's uh, R&B and there's um, pop and there's, you know, everything from rock to classic rock. I mean, we've got it all going on here. And I think there's something for everyone um, in terms of music. And then also we've got, you know, comedians and we've got scientists and we've got, we've got movies. We've, we've, we're kind of showing everything. And I feel like a lot of local give back initiatives are going to benefit from this as well, because it's not just going to be the shows that pop up, the community at large is also going to be involved. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the entire economy is going to benefit um, from north to shore. Uh, and, and, you know, if you think about going to a show yourself, if you make it a destination, if you're from Newark and you're going down to Atlantic City to see a show, uh, my uh, assumption is, our assumption is, you're going to get there early, you're going to indulge in the boardwalk, you're going to, you're going to um, visit some of the small businesses, you're going to probably maybe even stay overnight in a hotel, but you're going to, you know, need a meal and you're, you know, it's, it's so it's going to help in, in terms of, uh, you know, bringing, bringing, um, you know, new, new people into places they might not normally have been to. Um, and also, you know, elevating all of those small businesses and proving that New Jersey is one of the, one of the best places in the country uh, to have a small business and to operate. Is there an act that you and the governor are most looking forward to taking in? So I will tell you, there has been a very animated conversation ongoing in our house um, about all of these acts. You know, we've only to date announced about 24, 25 acts. And we actually have just finished an RFP and are about to unveil another 50. 
So this is a this is so so stay tuned on this front. Um, I, we've already had in less than a month we've had 4.4 million dollars in ticket sales alone, and there's a lot more capacity. So we're going to basically almost triple the size of this show of the of this entire you know um, festival. And I would just say to you that you know the ones that are coming up next are going to be a lot of the really local talent that is going to bring out our you know make all of our local communities really happy and proud to be able to support. Um, so from the Murphy household, I will tell you, uh, our children are looking at some, you know, they might be looking at some combination of, uh, you know, Halsey, or they might be looking, you know, where some of others of us might be looking at Southside Johnny or, you know, um, remember Jones, um, there's Stephen Colbert. I mean, there's so much that it's going to make it really hard. And I'm, I can't promote one without promoting all. So I think that at this point in time, we haven't decided where we're going to go, but we will be um, ever present throughout the festival. I'm sure you are. Well, it's every week. Every week is a different city. So you'll be able to spend your time adequately and not zipping up and down the parkway like you guys normally do. Exactly, exactly. Well, you know, that's okay. The new acts are going to be unveiled in the beginning of May, just so you're clear. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you are looking to see what's already available uh, and if you want to keep watching to see when the new ones are put up for sale, then it's uh, North toshore.com and that's uh, the two is T-O, so north to shore.com. Is this going to be a yearly thing? Absolutely. I mean, listen, you know, we you can't have things like South by Southwest in Texas where we have all the talent uh, and not have this going on here in New Jersey. We are so excited and so far, as indicated by the ticket sales, um, this is this is being really well received. So Assuming all goes well, our plan is that this is going to become an annual gig and it'll be really fun for Jersey to look forward to that every year. And like you said, we have so much talent and it's just so amazing that our tiny little state, I mean, generation after generation, we have changed pop culture across all fronts. What is it about this area that makes it so inspirational for people in the arts? I don't know. It's the magic sauce of New Jersey and I don't know what it is, but I can tell you that the the list of people who have an intersection with New Jersey is literally not to be believed. Um, I mean, going back as far back as Harriet Tubman and, you know, moving forward, Frank Sinatra to today. I mean, obviously the boss, John Bon Jovi. I mean, we've got so much talent here and, and you know, it, it's it's just it's great. I don't know what it is, but let's not change it. No, let's keep it going. And you're doing such an amazing job spotlighting this talent in such a big, epic way. First Lady Tammy Murphy, thank you so much. And we'll see you this June at all the different locations. We can't wait. Thank you so much and take good care of yourself. NJ Pack in Newark is one of the producers of the North to Shore Festival. Here to tell us more about this statewide event is CEO of NJ Pack, John Shriver. John, welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. I am so excited to talk all about this exciting North to Shore Festival. It really is so cool, one of its kind, and it's being produced by NJ Pack. Well, it's NJ Pack and, and many partners um, up and down the state. Um, this is, uh, we say that this a festival is too big for one city. So we, uh, we created North to Shore uh, at the inspiration of Governor Murphy and uh, First Lady Tammy Murphy. Uh, Governor Murphy is uh, somebody who really celebrates the diversity uh, of New Jersey in all ways. And, uh, and it is one of the most diverse states in the country in terms of uh, arts and technology. So the big idea was to create uh, a three city celebration that does that um, and that is reflective of the cultures and the realities in each of our markets. So in June, we will be uh, on consecutive weekends in uh, starting in Atlantic City uh, and then uh, in uh, Asbury Park and, and then uh, closing the festival out uh, in Newark. And it, it's uh, it's kind of unprecedented for New Jersey to have a, a festival of this size and breadth. But over the course of those three weekends, um, many really wonderful artists will participate, including um, 
Stephen Colbert and uh, Jim Gaffigan and Alanis Morissette and Santana and Southside Johnny and uh, Gavin DeGraw and Demi Lovato and the B-52s. I could go on and on and on. But in addition to all these big headliners that will play in the markets, uh, the local artists and creators and producers who make the arts hum in Newark and Asbury and Atlantic City all year round, they'll be participating as well. The festival has a, a grant program where uh, uh, local artists can receive up to $5,000 to create their own events to participate in North to Shore. Uh, and so it's a, it's a festival that we believe uh, will be reflective of uh, the personalities of each of our cities um, and also deliver some of the biggest names in the business. So. Uh, it, it's uh, uh, some are calling it New Jersey's uh, answer to um, uh, the um, uh, the Austin Festival. South by um, Southwest, Austin, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the the South by Southwest Tech Festival. But I think it's really uh, more uh, about us and about New Jersey and about the enormous creativity and diversity of our state. And there's so much. And when you go and look at all the people that have impacted arts and culture in the world, so many of them have come from our little state, right? In Hollywood and music. It's just so wild, the amount of people who have New Jersey roots. Some, from Jerry Lewis to Paul Simon to Queen Latifah to Savion Glover to Christian McBride to Sarah Vaughan to James Moody to, of course, Springsteen. I mean, the... The, the Meryl Streep, the list is endless. Um, I'm not sure what's in the water here, but uh, it's good for the arts. Well, I guess because it is so eclectic, right? Our terrain, you have the city, you have the beach, mountains. So there's a lot of places to pull inspiration from. And you're going to get a taste of that with this festival spanning the whole state. In your opinion, why does this benefit New Jersey so much? It's a, it's a brand new creation, so I can't predict uh, the specifics of how it'll benefit the state, but my hope is it's a chance for us to get to know ourselves better in Jersey, I think, uh, and it's also a chance regionally to invite people into New Jersey. Uh, if you're not from here and uh, you don't either have relatives here or something, you don't have reason to come here, New Jersey is a place that you pass through <laughs> on the way someplace else. Um, and uh, whether it is our beaches uh, or our cities uh, or, you know, the remarkable countryside that uh, that is so much a part of the geography of the state. Um, this is one of the best kept secrets, New Jersey, I believe. And of course, we get a bad rap. I'm not sure why, but uh, sometimes Jersey gets a bad rap. We don't deserve it. And I think this festival is a way for us to stand up straight and say, get a load of Jersey. Look at all the talent here. Well, like we said, so many of pop culture comes from New Jersey, so maybe people are just jealous of us. Who knows? <laughs> it could be. You know, yeah. you, know you, you may be right. Yeah. yeah. You talked a lot about the local activations happening around Atlantic City, for example. What's in the plans for Newark to showcase its best features? Well, it's, it's great. I mean, Newark is a very vibrant art city. Um, I think we were named one of the top 10 art cities in the country uh, for the past several years. Um, and uh, there's a huge artist collective here. Uh, and so in addition to presenting, uh, as I said earlier, folks like Bill Burr and Santana and Jasmine Sullivan and others at the Prudential Arena for thousands of people, uh, we'll have artists like Halsey uh, at Prudential Hall, which is our 3,000 seat concert hall. Um, uh, and we'll have Damon John, who's the founder of FUBU. He's going to do a tech talk. Um, and the Newark International Film Festival will occur uh, during North to Shore. So we'll be screening uh, scores of films uh, at a variety of locations around Newark. Um, and we'll be doing outdoor events in parks. Uh, we'll be in art galleries. Uh, we. Uh, will really cover the city with, I would imagine, some in the neighborhood of uh, 30 events over the, the course of the, the long weekend. And again, it's, it's just as here at NJPAC, uh, 600,000 people a year come to NJPAC to see something. Many of them simply come to the concert, 
uh, from wherever their home is outside of Newark, and then they leave. Um, and uh, what we want to encourage folks to do at this festival is yeah, absolutely uh, come see Santana at the arena, but come early in the day and uh, have, go to the Gospel Brunch. Uh, go to go to one of the art galleries that's doing something unique during North to Shore. Go to one of our free outdoor parks concerts. Go to the Newark Museum of Art um, uh, and check out one of the collections. So my hope is that this festival will encourage people uh, to get to know Newark in a way that they, uh, they, they, they haven't. Newark is a vibrant city uh, that has uh, got a great certainly uh, uh, arts uh, history, but also a, 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 great, a great sort of historical memory. There's a brand new Harriet Tubman monument uh, in the downtown of Newark that was just uh, unveiled a few weeks ago. So, so there's history here, there's the arts here, um, and of course, uh, technology through our, through our partnership with NJIT and others. And there's going to be so much to do, and I know the city is definitely going to put its best foot forward, that's for sure. How long has this been in the works for? And can you talk about the planning and the time that goes into pulling something like this off? This one has been um, uh, in active production for, gosh, I think really since December, um, which is a very, very short time uh, uh, to, to, to pull off something uh, uh, as expansive as this. Um, but it is something that um, the governor started talking about a year and a half ago. Um, but of course, government being government, things often take longer than one imagines. And uh, there was an RFP process uh, to identify who the producer would be, and we were lucky enough to get the job. And um, by the time we got the job and uh, went to work, uh, we were we were about six or seven months away from opening day, uh, and so we had to all work very very fast. Um, and we put our partnerships together with Montclair Film, for example, was doing film in um, in Atlantic City and Asbury. Uh, uh, Ken uh, uh, Gifford, who runs the Newark International Film Festival, came on as a partner, um, and uh, several promoter partners up and down the state. Um, and, uh, and we started uh, uh, establishing those partnerships, started our booking process, uh, uh, started figuring out how we would market. Um, so it's been a full court press. Um, usually festivals like this uh, uh, deserve about a year of planning. So we're, we're uh, accomplishing, we will accomplish, I think in six months or so, uh, what uh, under normal circumstances would have taken a lot longer. But uh, deadlines are sometimes good because they force you to uh, deliver on time and work more efficiently. Um, and uh, so it, it's, it's been a lot of fun uh, to uh, make something up uh, from scratch. There's never been a North to Shore statewide festival before. So uh, uh, the great part is uh, that uh, we expect that uh, this will be in the governor's budget for next year. And, uh, we'll deliver some really fascinating and, and fun uh, programs across the cities, but we'll also learn a lot um, for what happens in the next iteration of North to Shore. Who are you most excited to see at the North to Shore Festival? Oh, man, I have said I'm very excited to see Santana because I haven't seen him in many, many years. And about 30 years ago, when I was working for the Grammys, we produced a, a celebration of Santana's life and music um, uh, uh, at the Coliseum in LA. And uh, I got to spend a lot of time with him long ago and fell in love with him, his music, his, his point of view about life. Um, and, uh, and so I'm excited to see him again in concert uh, as part of North to Shore someone I haven't seen or spoken to in, in decades, and who was still wailing away uh, at the top of his game. Well, happy reconnecting there. Where can people learn more about the festival and to buy tickets? I think they can go to uh, northtoshore.com um, or to uh, uh, njpac.org. 
um, either place uh, will give you the, the lowdown on North to Shore. And uh, it's a very extensive site and gives folks an opportunity to, uh, to plan their festivals. Well, I'm going to give you an additional plug. When people go to njpack.org, I really implore them to join your email list because the emails I get from you are the most entertaining and I honestly always look forward to reading them. I read every line and your passion for the arts, for Nork, for NJPAC, it really shows through in everything you talk and write about. Oh, how kind of you. Are you talking about the, the, the messages, the special messages? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yes, your special messages. Oh, that's so, that, you've made my day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go out to the park and have a picnic now because uh, you, it's, uh, you must be the reader then. Thank you. No, I'm sure you have many other readers, but I always talk about that with our mutual friend that I know we were speaking of off camera, Deb Belfato. <laughs> That. Yeah, no, I did one. Actually, did you read the one we did about her? Yes, it was beautiful. And that's what I mean. Like, you don't see email blasts like that from the heart and so descriptive and in-depth. And you really give such a unique perspective that no other CEO of any organization gives. Oh, well, you're, I am now your biggest fan. I'm not just saying that. I always said if I had the opportunity to ever meet you, I needed to tell you that. You're very kind. Thank you so much. Thanks, John. Jared Clemens, son of the late, great Clarence Clemens of the East Street Band, is based in Asbury Park and will jazz up the North to Shore Festival with his band, The Late Nights, on June 18th, with a Clarence Clemens celebration to carry on his father's legacy. Here to tell us more is Jared. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It means the world to me. I mean, your music royalty here in the Garden State. So and this is this is truly an honor. Tell us about, before we get into the show happening on June 18th, your journey into the music industry. Um, you know, it started out, I was living in Tampa and, you know, things like that. And just music wasn't working out for me there. And, you know, they say that there's magic on the Jersey Shore. So when I came up here on my first tour, uh, truly experiencing the Jersey Shore, I really fell in love with it. And I decided not to go back. So uh, I came yeah. up here and planted my roots, and it's been that ever since. Well, your father got that magic, right? So I guess it's been carried yeah. on from generation to generation. How does it feel to pay tribute to him and his legacy in such an epic way at North to Shore? Um, you know, it's definitely, uh, it, it's, it fills my heart. It makes me so joyful that I can continue this on for him and in his honor and his name. And, you know, I just want to just remind people that he's he's such a force you know he's such a big guy he was such a big guy but for his heart not for his size and you know i'd never want people to forget what was the biggest thing that he taught you growing up music and otherwise um always stay humble and um stay hungry and keep keep driving you know and uh never to really give up on anything always try until uh you know always try and try and try and if you fall try again you know what inspired you to start the late nights? Um, so I came up here on the tour. I met a few guys at the time and they were like, well, if you ever want to start a band, if you're ever up here, like, let us know, we'll back you up. And then I decided, you know, I'm going to take that chance. And I came up here and started the band and I've, I've been here ever since. And, you know, it's been nothing but great. Nothing but great. How would you describe your sound? Um, I would explain it. I would describe our sound as um, like a Stevie Ray Vaughan, Rolling Stones, like a lot of classic rock and classic blues. And we get a, we're getting a little funky now. So we're diving into some new things. And it's really been it's been a lot of fun. Are you touring around the country yet? Um, not yet. We're actually working on finishing up our album and uh, with Telegraph Hill Records. And, um, you know, it's it's been taking some time, but we truly are finishing that up and getting that ready to be released. So we could have a big release party and then we'll go from there. This is the first year of North to Shore. So what was your reaction when you got that call to participate? I was actually, I was really over the moon. I was like, wow, like I've never been a part of something this big before. And, you know, it's definitely uh, something that a goal that we've had as a band and um, as a goal myself. And uh, when we got that call, it was definitely huge for me. I can imagine. So give us a sneak peek. What will the Clarence Clemens celebration entail? Well, we have a lot of special guests coming, uh, like Vinny Lopez, JT Bowen, and a lot more that I don't want to name yet. Uh, so it's going to be a great night, and, uh, you know, you don't want to miss it. 
Can you reminisce on growing up around folks such as Uncle Bruce Springsteen? Well, you know, it was like when I met him for the first time, I was a toddler and I, I will always remember this. And um, he picked me up and gave me the biggest kiss on the cheek and said, man, what a good looking kid. Clarence makes such good looking kids. So, uh, you know, I knew that that was like the special connection that we've had ever since that moment. Where can people buy tickets for your show at the Wonder Bar in Asbury Park on June 18th? Um, they can buy tickets online, the Stone Pony box office. You know, it's it's going to be a great time. So I you grab your tickets while you can. And where can people follow you? Uh, you can follow me on social media at Jared Clemens, J-A-R-O-D, not E-D, not two R's. And then C Lemons, like Clemens. <laughs> That's I how I like it. to explain it. Jared, this was really great. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. It means the world to me. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to this show. So I'll see you all there. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Your New Jersey. I'm Lisa Marie Falvo. We'll see you back here next week.